there are three big keys, obviously, in renting, rent collections, retention. I'm just going to spend a little time on uh, leasing today. So uh, mainly the, the do's and don't, what, don't do what I did because I made, I've made every mistake possible in leasing. Has anybody here self-named or have self-named properties before? Okay, good deal. Hopefully then this will be interesting. Hopefully you haven't made some of the mistakes that, uh, that I have. So anyway, pizza's on its way, relaxed atmosphere, the restroom right over here. There is water in that conference room. Maybe we went with some water and uh, beer and stuff over there. So um, a little bit about me. So grew up in a family lawn and garden center that really started off as a sod farm, strawberry patch, so pick your own strawberries and be seen that out and about. Grew into, my dad was an agriculture major, grew into a lawn and garden center. Um, I actually have a picture of me working on the farm. So, oh, oh no, <laughs> who is that guy? <laughs> this is actually me trying to get out of work. Dad, it's 100 degrees. We went and cut real stuff. So, guess how many dates that guy had in high school? <laughs> that would be zero. Um, anyway, so went to Augustana College, uh, started life as a music major, more really awesome stuff about me. I played the tuba. That also helps really get the girls. But, uh, <laughs> so a sophomore year, I'm like, I don't like all the other things about music other than playing my tuba. So I switched to business, got my degree from Augustana College, loved it. At Augustana, started off part-time at JCPenney. So I spent the next 20 years in retail from part-time, working my way up to uh, eventually managing big box sporting goods stores with each stores and $65 million in volume. So a lot of retail management experience. Um, all my stores are in Chicago. I live right here in Waukesha. So started a business with a buddy in debt collections, the uh, really the sexy uh, world of collecting debt, right? So we became a business owner, business was pretty flat and then uh, started collecting past due rent and pass through debt for Smart Asset Realty. And that's when I joined Smart Asset Realty as a leasing agent. So that's for all the mistakes that I made. Um, joined at 400 units in uh, March of 18, and uh, now we're at uh, the Kenya Operations Manager. And um, now we manage 2,600 units. Um, back one. So renting. Timing is everything. Starts right from the time that that notice comes in. Um, building a rapport with that tenant leaving right away, super important. Um, asking questions, we'll miss you. Maybe not really, but ask the question. Build that relationship that you have built perhaps throughout that time. Uh, where are you moving to? Why are you leaving? I want to buy, them buy your house. Awesome, where's your house? Congratulations, build that relationship. Um, and nobody wants to, no owner wants to do an investor, wants to do a unit turn. Try and convince them to stay. Why are you leaving? Well, they won't fix nothing, right? Maintenance often. Maybe you can overcome that. Um, maybe there are other things that they're looking for that you can get them to stay without having to move, have a potential two week to one month vacancy and get them to stay. Um, I actually like to review the security deposit refund during this uh, kind of exit interview went out. I couldn't convince them to stay. Why would you do that? Why would you talk about the security deposit refund while we're this tennis leaving? To the trip. Next is discuss convenient times for showings. And when was you shown the place? It's not necessarily always true that, but if you can convince them that allowing us to be there, you know, having people come into your home, strangers, is not convenient for them, right? They want their security deposit back. Building us all relationship building. You ju we're just trying to get an opportunity to come in and show their apartment while they're in the unit. Super important. Um, something to do with questions at all on that advertise right away don't wait couldn't get them to stay we built a relationship we know hey after five o'clock is great saturday mornings are great um anytime during the day do you want to be you know do they do they want to be a home owner there or not when they when they show the unit 
advertise it right away. Zillow, I hate to say it, is number one. Um, of all the different um, services out there, Zillow, Zumper, Apartments.com, Rents.com, Zillow is still number one. Um, expensive, but important. Um, Craigslist, I would say number three. I should, but Facebook Marketplace, obviously, huge. So advertise it right away, emphasize amenities, utilities that um, are included. Rent specials, really important, especially this time of year. Um, whatever you can do to incentivize that, that, that you can afford, right, to get them in. This is a good one too, referral bonuses for neighbors. If you know the neighbors, there's nothing better than to have a neighbor's Somebody that lives in that building, a duplex, their friend living in there, you're not going to have the bickering back and forth. Um, you know, this guy's stomping on, you know, your kids are running in and they live in the lower, all those complaints. You won't have that if you can get a referral from a neighbor in the building. So that's a really a great way to, um, to, to get tenants as well and cheaply. Showings. Respond to prospects inquiries quickly. This is something that's difficult. Um, I remember my first day out in the field, came in started on Monday, got in, did all the scheduling, advertising, then showing every hour, sometimes a half an hour, phone is blown up, got to respond, got to respond. The competition does not. I mean, I've had uh, prospects like, oh, I can't believe you picked up. I can't believe you picked up the phone. The other property management companies do not, or owners do not right away. Um, super important. Um, group showings. Anybody have a no-show when they're out trying to show an apartment? Terrible. Sucks. It is awful. Um, you just wasted all that time, right? Um, group showings, confirming your showings, all that basic kind of stuff is super important. Um, this is a good one. Um, create competition between prospects. So you have a group showing, you can see two people like it. Um, they, the prospect may ask you, well, you know, what, what are the qualifications? Hopefully those are already out there. You tell them, and then so how do I get the place? The answer is the first one that applies, that qualifies, gets it. I mean, I've had literally two prospects in the same unit applying at that moment to try and get the place. Competition. Um, pre get pre-approved applications if possible. That I would do a. Uh, individual showing, if it's pre-approved, tell them about it, hopefully there's photos. Um, if, you can, if you can do that, that is um, terrific. Good question. Yeah. For the advertising, use a certain platform to help push it out to all those different platforms? Yeah, I, we are an advantage here where um, we, uh, where our software does push it out there, even though for us personally, at Zillow is a separate price. Yeah. Um, Craigslist is not, it's free. Go on there and do it. Facebook Marketplace, you know, is is uh, is free um, and really works. Got it. What yeah. software can you share? Uh, we use that Folio. Pretty strong in a lot of ways, especially for for leasing. Any questions? Approval. Um, always set a minimum criteria, whether it's for fair housing or just to protect yourself. Um, advertise that minimum criteria. They need to meet it. Verify income and references. So with that criteria, you mean things like credit score or things like that? Yep. Credit score, criminal history, evictions, um, whatever you set just had to be consistent and just make sure they meet that. The minimum income. Yep. Minimum income. Yeah, and income is an interesting one too, because if he is included, well, it's like you have a standard income and then you have a duplex where he's not included, but then you have a poor family where he is included, you can really kind of adjust that and, and include some of that as income. Um, 
to help meet criteria, so that kind of thing. We we count food share as income, actually. Um, so um, verifying income, it's difficult now. There's apps out there to get fake pay stubs. Terrible, terrible, very tricky. Um, we're, we're, our, we as a company are on it, searching for them and trying to verify them. So that's a little bit tricky. Follow your own standards, okay? Um, we'll get into that a little bit, but uh, everybody's got a heart, but uh, you gotta, they, they gotta pay rent and you gotta be a good tenant. Um, questions on approval at all? Can you talk a little bit about what, what kind of minimums you would recommend? Kind of what? What minimums you would recommend? What, what minimums? Uh, it, it depends on, honestly, it depends on the rent and the market that, that, um, that you, the property is at and your own personal choice. Okay. So we, as, as a company, we have standards by market. Okay. Almost by not necessarily by zip code, but fairly similar. Okay. Um, then we could raise them. We can make it more difficult, potentially get a better, better tenant, but then keep rejecting and rejecting and rejecting a potential good tenant. So, you know, our standards in, I would say, you know, generally in Milwaukee is um, in South Little Low, 500 credit score, no evictions, okay? Um, no criminal history, no bankruptcies. But you get on the more the east side, that kind of thing, it's higher, okay? The locker shaw is higher, okay? And the rents are higher. Okay, you got to approve application, okay? Um, contact the prospect, send the lease, get it signed, get it paid, okay? General standard is reasonable, it's 48 hours to sign the lease and pay the deposit. And this can be a little bit difficult, um, but it's really important because that 48 hours, you're potentially not showing that unit because you have somebody locked in, okay? Now, within that, that, uh, that time, then at 40, I'll get it signed, get the deposit paid, even if they're gonna be moving in a month later. Get it paid, get it locked in. Um, and for us to pay leasing, leasing agent, because we have leasing agents on the field, 100% commission. For us, that happens as soon as what, what we do to create an incentive for our leasing agents is to, uh, as soon as they get the deposit paid, they get paid. They're not a part of the approval process, okay? So they gotta find good applicants um, and that type of thing. So um, those are really the kind of some general things that, uh, that we look for when you're leasing. So no questions at all on this at all? What's like a typical like leasing commission that you guys? Leasing what? Like for so uh, leasing agent like with a hundred percent commission. Yes, we're gonna. What's the typical commission on that? Like one month's rent, half month's rent. Um, it's it does vary. It does vary on the rent. Uh -huh. and it does vary a number of bedrooms. Okay, so our leasing agents for us, our leasing agents, they they really and their duties. So our leasing our leasing agents at Smart Asset. They advertise it, and we, we help with the advertising. They take the leads, they show it, and they get the deposit, that's it. So they're not responsible for the move-in, not the keys, all that kind of thing. So we pay a couple hundred bucks to them, and it can vary. On the higher ends, we give them a little more, but they, there's volume for them. So, but to the typical market is at least a half month's rent, mm -hmm. is what the typical uh, market is. And that's what they're, that's what they're looking for. The question. But don't, don't do what I did. Do not listen to sob stories. Oh my gosh. Big chance. It wasn't me. I just co-signed. I'll pay the I'll pay the double deposit. They say this right away, right away, right away. Because they know they're gonna get denied. They know there's gonna be trouble. Second week in the job for me. I never forget it. 7700 West Hampton, unit number four. <laughs> I bring no this building. Beautiful mother comes in wearing scrubs, registered nurse. 
looks great. I did all the work. I did all the work ahead of time. I, I contacted the current tenant number four, did the whole spiel, the whole security deposit. She cleaned her apartment before the showing, I had a bunch of people there. Um, just everything was perfect. The income was there, everything was there. Got back, did the application, got back to the office, she had an eviction. Went through this whole soft story. Ken Sharp, income was there. Um, went to my boss, said, okay, double deposit. <laughs> I ended up not even getting the double, double deposit. Okay, I mean, I got the first deposit, gave her the keys. Oh, yeah, I've been there for a second double deposit um, in a couple of days. Never saw, never got rent. Took her four months to get her out of there. I just got, I got bamboozled. It was awful. Um, the other thing is, it, yeah, don't wait for the security deposit. Always get first month's rent before you hand the keys. Make sure we enter just in her name. Okay, just some basic stuff that I certainly have failed to do at some point. Um, this is another one that got me. Don't take it down from advertising until that deposit's there, until it's paid. Okay. They bail on you within that 48 hours. Not in those days when I was doing this, so I, I listened to the story. Oh, I can't pay a deposit. I'll pay it in two days. Okay. It's Friday. Wait till Monday. Took it out from advertising. So now Thursday, all the way to Monday, it's not advertised. Um, and got, uh, got screwed, you know, because somebody let you down. Somebody that you have a heart for, you know, that kind of thing. So it's tough, you know, people will say a lot of things and do a lot of things when they want a place. And um, it's got to go with your criteria, um, have a heart, but um, the numbers, the, just the numbers don't lie. You know, it has to, they, the numbers have to add up. Everything has to be there. Everything has to be in check. So, cool. That's all I have. I'm not going to get into the other R's today, um, but uh, the rent collection retention, the other big ones, but um, that's all I have on leasing. Any uh, questions at all? Do, do you have any uh, benefits for releasing? Like, is there any kind of thing if somebody's in there? Yeah, so that's a great question. And, you know, the, the, the market is really hot now as far as, uh, as rent. So um, we currently don't like give a $50 discount to sign a new lease. Um, we kind of do the opposite. We actually <laughs> punish them for not repaying leasing. So if they want to go month to month, um, they're going to get a penalty. Yeah. Okay. So the incentive is to sign a year lease instead of to go month to month. Yeah. So yeah, that, yeah, that built into the lease. Yeah. 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 Can you change the qualifications if they have a housing voucher. The, the voucher, the voucher does count as income. The portion of the voucher does count as income. But there's still got to be enough income then to be able to pay the utilities, eat, get around, you know, but that, that's considered part of the income. How do you verify that they have to get in their name? <laughs> it sucks. You got to call, they call We Energies. That's the only way. All right. They, they don't supply like an email or anything like that or like, is there it, it can be done by email. It um, can be done. Yeah. <clears throat> so they can you a follow up email saying, yep, yeah. your statement, you know, blah, blah, blah. If you do it on the online version, right? But if yeah. you do it through phone or something like that, there's no like, they just tell you, yep, you're hooked up and that's it. Yeah. And then you got to trust either their word or call and say, hey, did this person hook it up? Good question. But the question that lies in here is, uh, so for the, Income required. Are you using three times, like three times income for the rent? Uh, we're using two and a half. Two and a half. We're two, uh, two and a half in the suburbs. Uh, we're three. Okay. Uh, how do you determine what 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 process do you follow to to find market rents? It's a great question. One well, number one, having twenty six hundred units does help. Um, uh, however. Um, uh, there is a rent match um, system that does help. It's called rent match. That really does help. 
got to have the correct square footage, really have to, you know, the bedroom's got to be accurate, all it has to be accurate. Rentometer is another one. Mm -hmm. What is it? Rentometer. Rentometer. Mm -hmm. I use that. Yeah, good one. It helps. Sure. Here's a question with um, Yuri. I, I've had, I've got a few properties and I've had um, tenants that have been quite good, and they're constantly asking me because they've got a cousin or they've got a sister or whatever wants the place. Have you ever thought of you tapping into your, you know, your 2600 and seeing if you can get leases through your current tenants? That's a really great idea. We're, we actually do that just usually within the building, but to expand that. Because I've put within that market could be, in, could be great. Right. Right. Based yeah. on that. Yeah, it, it could be great mm -hmm. and get them incentives. Um, that might have to come right from smart asset, right? Because, you know, you have a, two properties within a block, different owners, they can't, you know, that, that owner, it's his money, right? But then, um, because that, that's a block, list of people that they don't have to Great idea. Let's say I'm cell phone in a building and I know that the current tenant that's in there uh, <clears throat> maybe didn't leave my unit in the nicest condition. And I want to obviously get this one rented prior to the tenant leaving, but I know I'm going to be doing stuff to the units. What, what's some of the, you know, strategies to get past some of that? You got to really kind of know if it's, uh, if it's a unit that you actually own, you're going to know what you're going to do to it and just tell the truth and don't overpromise. for us as third party we have to estimate what the owner is going to want to do to that particular property so that you can say oh yeah there's a little hole here we're going to take care of that right there's a broken window of course we're going to take care of that um i'm not sure if we can build a touch up or do a full paint but use those incentives okay carpet doesn't look great we're going to try and clean it if we can't then we'll replace it so you just kind of be honest and have an idea of what you're going to do so, another one out here. So, do you guys, do you guys handle the eviction process? And if so, what does that process look like? Well, eviction, if for non-payment of rent, for us it's at uh, at Smart Asset, is really just to get the money. Okay, it's really if if the tenant is good and it's not causing problems and damage or uh, dealing drugs or something, you know, to that degree, just to get the money. If what that process looks like is. Um, yeah, is, you know, first on the sixth, you, you put in the, the late fee, the five days between the eighth and the 10th, follow calls and texts, get promises. And then if those promises fall, fall through, then we do actually just file an eviction. Okay. And through that eviction process, um, we really attempt to get a, uh, before court, get a um, agreed payment plan. And then, which, is, which once we go to court, we can get a stipulated judgment on that payment plan. And if they break it, then we can evict. So what, what that looks like is it's really relatively a short term now. So it could be first of the month, they haven't paid rent. Um, by the end of the month, could be an eviction. Generally, that doesn't happen right now as often that quickly because there would have been more of a history of non-rent. If they were at a zero balance the first of the month and haven't paid by the end of the month and have promises, probably would not be an eviction at that point until we got old, more time and more broken promises. Um, and then the community advocates, right, is all a part, part of this before and even during the eviction process. Does that answer that question or? Great. Anything else? All right, thank you all, appreciate it.